My people, APC people don't change her for Peter Obi and Vice Ado. Hey, they don't change her, so they don't carry her go another level. Hey, like you have a cover side, they talk say, why he petition Peter Obi? When he talks, he demand the arrest of Peter Obi immediately. My people, Kiyabo don't come aside. Like a lot of people, they talk, say, he be like, say, Kiyabo, you say, Kiyabo, you they run for court. Why be say, you the petition Peter Obi, me they go arrest Peter Obi? <laughs> now, Kiyabo don't let us understand, say, Peter Obi and the vice, no one accept defeat. And then no one pass through the healing process. Peaceful way. So they are say Peter will be an advice. They come to social media, they try to convince people to poison their mind against APC. So that when you go bring a lot of protests like Elsas, like Peter will be they try to create. So Kiyama they let us they understand say for that reason, DSS people lead to arrest. Peter will be an advice. Say a love is a love. If case they caught, what you go make Peter will be go the grant interview up and down. They talk the one way not be true. Last so they stole a mandate. Last so he we if they talk say Peter will be way be told. How they they stole your mandate? If they have to be talking about say okay somebody even walk up and say they achieved their mandate. Now I think Kula is supposed to they do all those one. Not be even Peter will be now. Kiyama they talk say he call on DSS. Say me they call arrest Peter Obi. He say he talk with a full chest and he like make him publish the petition where we say he sign against them. My people go like Mekula go here from Kiyabo. Mekula hear what he Kiyabo they talk say na hero na he talk say me they go arrest Peter Obi and advice. Say enough is enough. Say if they no arrest them, Peter Obi and advice go cause another answers for Nigeria. Mekula go watch the video. For the sake of our country, let us come together. And I think that is the line that Peter Obi and Dati Ahmed, they have crossed. There is a constitutional process to address grievances. A process has taken place. An election has happened in accordance with the law. Results have been declared by the body constitutionally imbued with the right to declare that result, which is INEC, not any other body, INEC. INEC has declared a president elect. The constitution also envisages that certain persons will be dissatisfied with that declaration. So we are not in a position or situation of constitutional crisis like Dati Ahmed tried to, to paint. This situation was or has been envisaged by the constitution that certain persons will be dissatisfied. And if you are dissatisfied, they are laid down procedures to address those grievances so that democracy will function, those, con those institutions will function, and democracy will function and will survive. Now, what is going on is that Dati Ahmed comes here, and it has been a series of interviews by himself and Peter Obi. Yesterday was the final nail on the coffin. It was the final straw that broke the camel's back. That somebody who, wants, who wanted to become vice president of this country of that, that, that level, would come here, sit before the world, and tell the world that he does not recognize a president-elect that has been declared by the Independent National Electoral Commission, and that the president-elect must not be sworn in, and that he does not even re recognize, you know, the process that they have, you know, started you know, in court, he has not. He does not trust that process. I mean, and that's the person who wanted to become who wanted to become vice president of this country. How? And then he arrogates him to himself the right or the power to interpret the constitution, interpret, you know, section one thirty four of the constitution to suit his own whims and caprices, and then declares that what the INEC did was totally unconstitutional. And that what will come in on May 29 will be an unconstitutional government. It is, it is the delusion of grandeur. It's complete delusion of grandeur for anybody to say now that there is no president elect. Which so, is uh, it's complete delusion. So of that is the so, specifics of, yes, of uh, your anger. Exactly. Just to tell you that, that that amounts to subverting the very process that they have started in the tribunal. The tribunal they are subverting that process. 
by coming out of that process to then call for insurrection in a subliminal manner, for protest and insurrection to truncate that process. I want to say this clearly, that the process we have established since 1999 is that elections take place. People are sworn into office, but those who have grievances are given the right to continue their grievances, to their, you know, air their grievances in court. And some months into their tenures, if the judgments come in, they are removed from office. So there is nothing so serious that he came to raise here yesterday about swearing in somebody who has been given a certificate return. He himself, Baba Dati Ahmed himself, was removed from office twice. He stole people's mandates. And I'm not saying I'm not saying anything gross. It is judicial pronouncement that you stole a mandate. He was sworn in as a senator, was he not? He accused your party no, of but stealing. No, but hold on. But remember. he was sworn in. And I'm asking. Okay, let me finish. I'm asking. Let me finish this sentence. He was sworn in as a senator. But the person who was challenging his victory continued his case in court. And under CPC, under the same Buhari that he's abusing now, he rode under his wings, purportedly won a Senate, a Senate seat in Kaduna, was sworn into office. Nobody, did, nobody said he shouldn't be sworn in at that time. But he was carrying a stolen mandate. And at the end of the day, there was judicial you know, pronouncement. And Baba that time was removed from office. Why is he opposed to that same procedure that he benefited from? In our own case, it is not an admission that our election was flawed, was, was totally flawed to the extent that it substantially affected you know, the result of the election. No. I'm not admitting that. I'm not saying that this is a procedure we have since established in 1999. So why is so this... So you think that the election was now? flawed? Oh, what? You think that the election was flawed? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm saying that it was not flawed to the extent... But it was flawed. No, it in some flawed. areas, there were, there were infractions in areas. In the southeast. But the allegations are that... In the southeast. That, that, in that, the southeast, there were flaws. That the, the, in the southeast, the victory, there were some flaws. That the victory of your party is yeah. illegitimate because they believe that there were a lot of voter suppression and, in fact, it's a stolen mandate. Who, Those who, are the words of, of the opposition. Who has the right, who has the right to make that determination? You were asking him yesterday. Institutions must function. How can someone who is... A, a participant in the process now arrogates on himself, on himself the right to be the judge and the jury and the accuser, and you are a participant in the process. In fact, yesterday I heard one of the strangest sentences I've heard as a lawyer. You know that sentence he came here to say, and I'm not surprised because he's not a lawyer, but he runs an institution. He said, this section of the constitution, the constitution comes, comes interpreted. You heard that yesterday. That, no, 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 don't, don't, you don't need to bother. This section comes interpreted. I have never heard that in my life. What I have heard from my life as a law student is that the right to interpret provisions of the Constitution lies in the judiciary. And that's why you have a tripod. And I'd like to, you and I'd like, like you to, Let and I'd like to this. get your own interpretation. I mean, but just uh, before we get further into that's controversial section 134 because on this program I've had to speak with a former NBA president Olisa Agbakoba who two or three months ago raised this matter and said it's going to be a problem and it's likely to cause a lot of chaos in our election because according to him it's not clearly stated whether or not FCT has the constitution captured it. But let me ask you, what he said, part of what he said and part of what the opposition has said is that when you tell people to go to court, it then means something, that you steal something from them and you are asking them to go through a process in which you are predetermined or you have your way around that process. So just hang on. That is don't, one of the interpretations don't, 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 of go to court coming from your camp. Just hang on a minute. If I don't say go to court, what will I say? It's a rhetorical question I'm asking you. If I don't say go to court, what would I say? As a winner, but does he also say, mean that do, do I, you? Do I, will I say? Will I say? Come, let's fight. Does it mean that you predetermine the process? No, not predetermined. Thinking? I'm only asking you a rhetorical question that answers your question. If I don't say go to court, what it means, if I don't actually use that word, that sentence, is that avail yourself of the procedure of the the the, the machinery for addressing your grievance as provided for by law. That is what it means. I'm only saying it in specific terms, go to court. If I don't say go to court, the next thing I will say is that, come, let's fight. So why are they saying, why are they using such phrases or such sentences 
in a derogatory manner. It is what is provided for by law. And people have actually retrieved their mandates by going to court. It is only when it does not favor you. And that is what the Labour Party is doing. And that is why I had to petition them to the DSS. They say build up to something that they are doing. They say build up. The build up they are doing is to rile the people up, pump them up, and then turn them against the judiciary that if your judgment does not go in a particular way, and that is why he has come here yesterday, he came here yesterday to say the constitution comes interpreted. What does that mean? He's telling the judiciary that this thing, I have interpreted it, the people of Nigeria have interpreted it, and if you say anything different, they will come after you. So what and is, so, no, yeah. no, I need to make this point. Yeah. I need to make this point. That is where they are going. And so, they are, they are setting up a scene for rebellion. And they are setting up a scene to blackmail the judiciary. And that is why if you go online now, I have alerted the, they have alerted the DSS, that they have camped some boys in one popular hotel in Abuja. And I will give that information to the DSS, where they have told them every morning to be pumping out, you know, you know uh, uh, online messages to rile up the citizens, cause fear, and all of that. And so, what they want to do is to say, once the judiciary now goes another way, then the judiciary must have sold out. So and me, that's why they are threatening yeah. the judges. And they have gone up to that point. I want to make this point. Nigerians must know that the Labour Party online touts now are threatening judges, threatening their families, exposing them. Go online and see what is happening. And so... There is a situation where they want to create fear in this country. They try, you know that during the elections, they try to threaten people to support them. They failed. During the announcement, they tried to threaten INEC. Everything about them is threats. To threaten INEC to support them, they failed. Now they want to move to the judiciary. It is enough is enough. Shen, we are ready. Let me tell you this. People who voted, the majority of that, who voted for Asiwaju and the APC, they are the silent majority now. And so if they think they want to push this country towards NSAS, where it was citizens, NSAS was a situation where citizens were dissatisfied with a policy of government, an institution of government called NSAS. That was, that was totally different. But they think they can, they can rile up and, you know, citizens towards a situation of SARS again, but NSAS. But this time, they should realize that this is not activity, it's, po it's pure politics. And if you want to do that now, it will not be citizens against government. It will be citizens, voters against voters. People who voted for the ruling party. You, you, you imagine so, that the so, mandate, so, the mandate of your candidate and, and for your party is it popular? So I will ask you this question, a rhetoric question. Again. No, 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 I'm not supposed to answer it is, it is. I'm supposed to be asked. No, it's a rhetoric question that I used to answer you. That Peter Obi, with the kind of message he preached... Did he expect, in all honesty, a man who came to us saying the confess, did he expect, in all honesty, to win in areas where that message did not, you know, go down well with people? He was telling the churches, take back your country. Take back your country from where? Now, look at the heat map of the votes. Look at the Nigerian map. Pick it up and look at the heat map of his votes. He, he succeeded in those areas where his message is sunk in about Christians take back your country. He, 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 he forayed into the middle belt where Christians are predominant and ended there. He could not go further than that place. Look at the heat map. And so the heat map exactly reflected the kind of message he he, 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 you know, he, 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 he so, 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 so within so, the ambit so, of the law, I'll tell you this. You, within the I'll ambit of the law, if someone is hurt by a process and he lost out in the process and he thinks that he, that loss was illegitimate, he was, he was edged out illegitimately within the ambit of the law, does he not have the right under the law and the independence of mind to be able to speak out? Oh, there. But you don't say you don't recognize. The, a legitimate government. That is treasonable felony. What Peter Obi and Dati Ahmed are doing is treasonable felony. And we must draw the line for them now. That is your, you. that is your interpretation. No, it is not. It is, well, it see, is the hold guts on, to... Hold on. to, to when, when you don't recognize a legitimate government that has gone through the process and it is legitimate, and you say you don't recognize it, you want to live your own life, it is, it is treason. And let me tell you this. That's how you interpret what, what it. What Peter court now what, say? Uh, what Peter uh, will be? That is when they will defend themselves now. But you must be charged first. 
You understand me? You will be charged for that. You must be. You must. That's what I'm telling them to do. I'm not interpreting. They will charge them for that. Charge yeah. them and go and defend yourself. That's why? The, that's why the, you are the, calling up people to protest? As a remit of to, the states to do this. Yes, that's what I'm. That's why I've, I've submitted myself to process. Have I not? Did I come here to say I will go and harass them physically? I have. I have instituted. I'm, I'm a senior lawyer. I've instituted the process. I have started the process. And you see what they are doing. Let me tell you, they are living in a bubble of their own. Peter Obi. That he and his supporters, I'm saying this on air, they are living in their own bubble. They are not hearing the other voices of Nigerians who are saying, we hate your bigotry. We are not buying your message of Christian, Christian, uh, Christian votes. We are not buying your, your tribalism. They are not hearing those voices. There are voices in this country. Say, well, no, hold on. There are voices in this country saying we don't like those messages. But they are not hearing those voices. They are living in the bubble of their own. And they will hear those voices very soon if they continue with this nonsense they are doing. Right. As from now on, it's going to be propaganda against propaganda. Word for word, we will meet them everywhere because as she what you has a mandate, he will defend. And we're prepared to defend that mandate. And you politicians are not afraid of burning this country with no, the manner in no. which you have described. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you why. If you want to, if you want to push your supporters to protest, it is only where you are popular you can protest. So you are going to be burning the areas where you are popular. Do you want to tell Obi that I can call us protesters in Kanu? We can you call up protesters right. in the kitty? Can you call up protesters in Ondo? Can you call up protesters in Bronu? Can you call up protesters in Jigao? Go and call them out now. Right. Where we are. You can only call up protesters where you, they are popular. So you'll be born in areas where you are popular. That is where you can born. Let me pause you for a moment. I will take, uh, we'll, uh, we'll pay some bills and we'll come back to the conversation. And I'd like to know your own interpretation of section 134 in also looking at section 229. These are some of the issues that have been raised yesterday and I get your reaction to those uh, issues. Stay with me, everyone. We'll be right back. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. Let's bring these news quickly to you about the activities of the People's Democratic Party and some disciplinary measures that have been taken. We understand now that the former governor of uh, Ekiti State and the former SGF, the former Senate President, uh, Pius Aim, alongside Governor Fayashe, Professor uh, Itavaya, and Aslam Ali, you have been suspended by the People's Democratic Party, uh, Governor Autumn of uh, Benue State has been referred to the National Disciplinary Committee. We're getting more reactions on that and uh, on China's television news at 10 and more stories on that. Let's continue our conversation with Mr. Fessor Skeyamo. Thanks so much indeed for your time. Thank you. Let me take you to section 134. Uh, my guest yesterday was before, saying... Before I just go there, just for one second, you know, to, to mention this. My people, now the video now on a new watch really so. On a see what it happened for inside the video. All right, my people, I would like to end the video for you. Make could let me know what it all right. for the comment section. And if I never subscribe, make could subscribe. So that you will miss any little edges where I upload. On a my battle, I will let's start. Bye, guys. Catch my next video. Bye, guys.